Hello, this is Surya Saha and welcome to the Insurex Story Podcast, the platform to spread knowledge on insurance innovation, digital disruption and entrepreneurship. Our website is insurexstory.com and we are available on Spotify, Apple and Google. Today we are going to discuss on the topic, how well insurers listen to customers who knows what they want. And for now, I'm delighted to welcome our guest, Dr. Nilesh Karnik, who is the Chief Data Scientist at Aureus Analytics. Dr. Nilesh is responsible for development of algorithms and mathematical models that power Aureus platform and products and help large organizations with advanced analytics solutions. From the academic side, Dr. Nilesh's PhD made a substantial contribution to the theory of type 2 fuzzy logic systems and his work is widely referenced in the industry. While busy developing the next big statistical model, Dr. Nilesh can be found looking for interesting audiobooks on life and related subjects. Dr. Nilesh, welcome on board and we are truly excited to have you for the show. Thanks, Surya, and uh, you know, thanks for all the kind words. Happy to be here. Would you like to tell our audience a bit on your role at Aureus Analytics? Sure, sure, Surya. So, uh, Aureus Analytics is an insurer tech. Uh, we basically work with insurers um, and help them solve their business problems. Uh, you know, uh, and our solutions are based on analytics and uh, uh, obviously technology, right? So uh, my role, uh, you know, uh, as as a chief data scientist is uh, understanding the customer's requirement. The customer here is an insurer. Understanding their requirement, business requirement, uh, abstracting it, uh, you know, the the analytics part of it, right? So so how right. would I address a business requirement using analytics? Understanding that, not, and then breaking it down into uh, different sub problems, which then you know we 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 use. Uh, uh, make use of data science and, and technology to, to provide a solution. Right. You know, uh, uh, Dr. Nilesh, uh, in insurance, uh, one of the major challenges that insurers face is understanding the customer's mindset, you know. And right. it is clear that insurers' perceptions are often unequal to the realities of consumers. And there seems to be a huge gap in what consumers want and what insurers think their consumers want. How do you see this changing in the coming days, especially when we talk about, you know, analytics and technology and data science? Yeah, that's a great question. And I think uh, I could talk a lot about those uh, points. But yeah, so, so yeah, there definitely is a gap um, in, in uh, what the insurance per- insurers perceive and what a customer wants. But that gap is definitely reducing, right? Uh, right. And it is reducing with the use of uh, technology, data, and AI to infer from the data, yeah. So, I, I, I you know, if I, if I take a step back, right, and, and, and try to simplify it, you, you know, what does a customer want from a, a customer of an uh, insurance company? You know, what mm-hmm. would they want? Very simply, if I if I sort of uh, look at it at a very high level, you know, they would want the right product right. for them and their family. Uh, they would want uh, typically want you know quick service like uh, quick policy issuance uh, or mm-hmm. quick claim settlement. And, uh, uh, if, you know, uh, in general, they want a, you know, hassle-free, good experience, uh, you know, uh, and, and the good, exp- you know, and here is where it gets tricky, right? Because what, is, what could be good experience for one person may not be equally good for another person, right? So, so that is where the individualities come in. So, so the tricky part is uh, an insurer is looking at a population of, uh, you know, a, a lot of people where these these individuals in that population you know have, have all different requirements you know they they have different product requirements they come from different family backgrounds they have different incomes so the so what right product means for each of them is different uh they have different expectations in terms of the service so again what good service means for one person you know may not be the same for other person right and True. and that's the that's a tricky tricky part of the situation so from an insurer's point of view uh you know they they know very little about the customer uh at uh, e- even when the customer comes on board you know they pretty much have the information that is written on the insurance form uh the the application form and and you know before uh filling out the application form in fact you know is typically just the name and contact information or something like that right 
um so so it is actually difficult for them to understand the uh, customer but but now uh, you know this gap is definitely reducing so with the use of uh, like i said you know data technology and ai and when i say data is the data captured by the insurer uh, in their systems it is mm-hmm. possibly also data that they are sourcing from other places you know like maybe credit bureaus or or uh, other organizations and you know other data vendors uh, the use of technology to to capture more and more data to process that data and you know so to close the loop with the customer and finally the use of uh, ai to infer from the data so all of it is helping the insurer understand uh, the individualities of their their customers uh, much better you know so right. so and that is how the gap is 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 reducing basically right so so uh, the, the interesting part is even today if you think about it you know even at a prospect stage even when uh, the insurer might just have your name and address mm-hmm. uh, they can understand a fair bit about uh, you uh, because uh, you know there are so they have your address right so they 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 can figure out what uh, locality you are staying in they can probably understand what kind of housing you are staying in uh, if they have enough information in those aspects right uh, based right. on that they get a sense of your uh, lifestyle and uh, you know and and so on and so forth so so basically even at a prospect stage uh, by perhaps using uh, some external data points they can infer a lot once you come on board as a customer we you know you you give them your uh, base information policy uh, required for the policy uh, they know they know more and uh, you know once you become their customer start interacting with them you know more and more data is captured so uh, there's there's a whole lot more than so so the so, so the you know just to to cut the long story short basically again you know the ability to capture a lot of data to process it to infer from it uh and uh, you know to, to close the loop is 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 uh, allowing the insurers to understand their customers a lot better so that gap is reducing so i wouldn't say it's perfect is definitely uh, not uh, perfect yet uh but it is improving right so i think insurance is getting there yep so getting what there. we were before it's getting there and substantially you know the gap will reduce and we'll see more customer yeah, so insurance I, interactions know, uh, so if i take the liberty of citing one example the, the yeah, example yeah. i really like in this aspect is uh, see in the old days uh, you know uh, maybe a couple of generations ago uh, there weren't too many insurance companies and uh, typically a lot of the uh, insurance uh, needs were met through agents so uh, you know if you if you uh, talk to somebody in the older generation uh, older than me that is right uh, maybe uh, uh, you know my my dad's generation or somebody like that they would uh, you know have work with agents and some of these agents knew their customers really well you know they they knew the family they knew the requirements so if the agent had a good amount of empathy they could figure out what was the correct product to give to that customer what time should they approach that customer you know how much the customer was able to pay and so on you know and that relationship mm-hmm. worked really well the only issue is it wasn't scalable now right. we are at at such a place right that that although we we said insurance is getting there if we are able to use all the resources in the right way we can probably get to a level where the insurer can start functioning like a you know a great uh, quote unquote agent and here i'm using the word agent as that you know entity who's who's uh, helping the customer so the customer feels like you know they're cared for there's somebody who understands uh, their needs and you know doesn't excessively trouble them right yeah true you know uh, uh talking on uh, what we just spoke on the gap and what customer thinks you know instead of delivering an excellent after sale customer support the insurance industry traditionally speaking is placed more you know emphasis on selling the coverage right so the fact that insurers knew far more about the risk than the consumers insurers i mean or rather insurance was ideally sold rather than bought and it still continues to a, a very large extent so mm-hmm. how do you see technology changing this to bring consumer experience forward to drive better purchase decision yeah good question good question um so you know like you also said i believe that insurance is still uh, uh, more of a push product right uh, so it's is you know it's still a push uh, but uh, with the help of uh, you know with the help of technology 
the situation is improving so mm -hmm. i i would look at it at three levels right just taking on from your question so the first part is you know while it still remains a push i think that push has become more somewhat more gentle you know if i may say so uh that's part one uh secondly and i'll, I'll maybe explain that a little bit more but second is uh, you know there's a uh, you know you know the the technology is helping uh, uh, a lot of customers uh, no, i wouldn't say a lot there's a, there's a section of customers who like to do things themselves right they would prefer to browse through products themselves and make their own purchase without having to go through uh, you know another individual and that is possible today Through technology, right? So there are a lot right. of these self-service options where you can figure out what you want, you can search, you can choose, and you make your purchase, you know, without actually having to talk to anybody. So that is possible. And the third part where technology is helping is also the product innovation. And here, when I say product innovation, I'm saying the insurance product innovation, right? There's, yeah. there's a bigger yeah. choice of products for customer. So uh, if, if you look at all these three, if I may elaborate a little bit on all of these three, right? So the when I say the push is becoming general, uh, it's it's kind of, so kind of carrying on from from the first uh, uh, you know from my answer to your first question. So because the insurer is able to understand the customer better uh, in terms of uh, their individualities and their choices, and maybe has a better idea of uh, their backgrounds, uh, they are able to offer more relevant products. Okay, so as a customer or as a prospect, uh, or even if there's a push, right? As a prospect, if if somebody offers you uh, uh, some insurance products, uh, there's a higher likelihood for that customer to buy or the prospect to buy if those choices are more relevant to them, right? So rather than some blanket choices given to me, if what is offered to me is is very close to what I really want, I'm more likely to make a purchase. uh and i'm more likely to also continue and stick through that product you know not 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 terminate my uh, contract quickly yeah. so so that is what i meant by the push becoming more gentle so and and that is coming from a lot of analysis that goes on in the background uh you know on the prospects data and on the customers data where uh, we have a new prospect coming in the insurer will try to figure out how does this prospect match with their existing customer base or their existing prospect base and based on that then what are they likely to buy and you know what are they likely to need and 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 so on you know so so that's that's sort of carrying on from understanding that customer better uh second part i think second and third point right where i said the self service part of the more technology driven so uh, just a wider uh, 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 set of options where customers can uh, look for uh, you know different options and purchase what they want uh, and in terms of the product innovation i think uh, maybe i don't have uh, a lot to say there but but there, there there are examples of a lot of innovative products which are very much based on technology you know uh, so an example of it is uh, um, you know uh, transportation or, or 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 driver insurance related products where there's a use of telematics you yeah. know so uh, to to track the driver's behavior and uh, and the risky uh, behaviors are discouraged uh, safe behavior is encouraged sometimes uh, the behavior is too risky the insurer may also terminate this policy so in sense what they are doing is they are uh, a lot uh, able to track the their customers behavior a lot better through the use of technology and they are using that uh, uh, you know to to encourage safe driving and, and reduce claims and so on so that's a and, and there are more examples but that's an example of of uh, product innovation so uh, i think all in all uh, you know just summarizing you know like we still said it's it's a push it's uh, it's improving and uh, there, there are more choices for individuals and uh, you know more uh, appropriate choices as well sure yeah you know we we normally talk about customer sentiments and how it is essential it is actually becoming an essential parameter in insurance uh and you being in the right. data science field how do you see data helping insurers to understand uh consumer sentiments you know better and of course i would really you know encourage you to quote an example from your organization um, like you have a product called centimeter that you have developed for insurers 
Right, right, right. Sure, sure. Yeah. So, uh, customer sentiment is is uh, very important. Obviously, you know. So, if you think uh, again, if you think from insurance point of view, uh, a, a happy customer is is more likely to stay with them. Uh, I think uh, I, you know. Sometimes we we sort of go overboard and think that. All decisions are driven by sentiment, uh, which probably is not the case. You know, there may be a, a small proportion of decisions, uh, you know, which are driven by need, like uh, somebody needs money, and you know, if they are happy with a policy, you know, they, they might want to uh, give it up and, and convert it to money. But but yeah, but still, a large proportion uh, of of uh, the customer decisions or customer behavior is still uh, driven by sentiment, and that's a uh, I think that's a fair. Uh, yeah, uh, fair understanding, right? But now the tricky part is how do you understand the customer's sentiment? Okay, uh, so I, I think the you know when I think of an insurer trying to understand their customer sentiment, the the analogy that I like to one of the analogies that I like to think about is, is you know it's like a teacher teaching a large class, you know, and that class is not very interactive. Um, very few students who are interactive who are answering questions. Others are just silent, um, and the teacher is trying to figure out where uh, you know the majority, the class have have they understood what the teacher is teaching or not, right? So so now you can understand what's happening to a teacher, right? That there are yeah. very few students who are answering or telling them whether they understood or not. Others are just just quiet. So so what can the teacher do? The teacher can probably encourage more interaction. Uh, you know they they can encourage students to talk. Uh, but even that uh, will work only to a limited extent. So typically, the teacher is then going to finally fall back, uh, you know, on on their own experience and observe students and and try to make a guess, right? So depending on whether the student is looking at them or not, or looking at their, you know, looking at the floor or or looking in some random direction, and and the expression on their face, they are trying to gauge uh, whether this person is likely to have understood or not. Uh, obviously, it's tough for one person to do that for the entire class. Right. But but that's an example that I, I I like to use, right? So 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 it's, so there's somebody who is listening to you, uh, or or you hope they're listening to you, and they don't say they don't tell you anything about it, right? So how the the, the only way you can then guess uh, if if they have understood or not, uh, or if or or if they're happy or not is is by observing them, yeah. right? So, and that's exactly what happens uh, for the insurer, right? So so there are very few. Uh, insurance customers who respond to customer satisfaction surveys or NPS surveys when uh, there's a very small proportion, right? And even in those cases, uh, if you think about it, right, a customer sentiment, uh, you you may have a customer uh, filling in uh, or responding to an NPS survey and giving a great rating um, on one day, and then maybe something happens in the next week. Uh, and at the end of the next week, if you see uh, what their opinion is about the same, uh, you know, same uh, entity, same insurer, their opinion might have changed. So, so which means that person's uh, uh, opinion or the sentiment, right? It, it can change over time depending on their interaction with this, uh, uh, with the company or the service they are getting. Uh, it can also uh, it is also complicated by the fact that you know sometimes the same individual has multiple policies or multiple uh, you know with a, with the insurer so something might be going great with one policy may not be going that well with another policy and if the insurer does not uh, for some reason does not understand that is the same customer uh, underlying those two policies they will fail to understand that this one person may not actually be happy although one of their policies is doing well you know so a lot of these things uh, 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 complicate uh, the understanding of of uh, sentiment. Uh, but the key, you know, like I said, again taking a cue from that uh, teacher's example, the, the key is being able to observe and observe more. So the the more you observe and the more you are able to reflect on those observations or or infer from those observations, the better uh, you are. You know, the the better position you are in to understand that uh, customer sentiment. Now, now in this case, right? When we say observe a customer from an insurance point of view, what it means is, is, is you know, capture more data, uh, which which is largely happening. Uh, but but you know, so if they are able to capture more data at at every possible uh, transaction or every possible touch point, and then infer 
uh, from it. You know how the customer is feeling. Uh, I think that's the key. You know that's the that's the way to go about it. Uh, and you know so so uh, I I think maybe it's a longish answer, but I, I'll continue since you asked about our our product as well. So uh, uh, centimeter is a is an audience product, which uh, you know does something like what I just said. So obviously that's not the only way uh, you could go about uh, gauging somebody's sentiment. Obviously there always are different ways to do the same thing. However, Centimeter uses this particular approach. So what it does is it actually keeps track of um, all of those minute uh, uh, events. Uh, we call them events uh, that are happening in a customer's journey with an insurer and tries to infer from each of these events whether it's likely, whether the customer is likely to be happy when that event is happening or it's likely to be unhappy. And then it aggregates all of that information up for a customer, you know, across their policies and across time. So, so in a sense, you have uh, something like, a, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 something like a stock price uh, chart. It is, typically, it's not that jerky. But uh, something like a stock price chart where uh, you have a moving uh, index, uh, which tells you uh, about a customer sentiment at a given point of time. Right. You know, so that, that is what sentiment does. I think it's a very powerful tool. I mean, I was just going through, you know, your websites and just reading and learning on the products. I would really encourage our listeners also to browse through the product and how it actually uh, helps insurers uh, growth story and you know you when you when you have uh, touched upon the example of teacher and student i was just trying to relate it on how difficult it might be for insurers to actually gauge or rather understand you know uh, the opinions or the and what the customers perceptions are without uh, uh, you know the or rather in absence of the right expression or, or opinion. So basically, you literally have to try and analyze, try and mine such, uh, you know, expressions or what the customer is trying to think. And the most difficult part is you're, you're going to do that from the vast amount of data, which is unstructured in nature and in, and comes in real time. Right. So a powerful tool, tool in place actually to understand the sentiment of the customers and give uh, and turn insurance from a push product to a product that can be bought. It, bought it can. It, it's it's kind of a challenge in itself, but a huge opportunity is if, if it can be you know cracked well. And I'm sure analytics is doing a lot of progress in that. Uh, and of course, we are getting there. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, that, that that makes a lot of sense. And you know, just going back to the the point you said about the the vast amount of data. Yeah. I mean, and, and you know, there could be many approaches. But but what Centimeter does use uh, in, in internally, right, is uh, an approach which is analyzing each uh, individual transaction in, in using you know business sense. Uh, so very very simple. A very simple example is, is saying you know I have if I have two customers, one who pays on time. Uh, all the time versus one who takes a lot of reminders uh, and pays late. I would probably guess that the first one who's paying on time is 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 uh, you know is happier uh, with the overall situation than the other one, right? Mm. So it does do that kind of reasoning, uh, and and it it gets more complicated with more complicated events. But it does that kind of re- reasoning and then aggregates it. But yeah, there could be multiple approaches. I think it's a start uh, yeah. in, in a sense. And uh, uh, any, any, uh, I mean, all of these things are, are definitely going to help the insurance industry, uh, you know, move to a move to a better situation. Sure. Yeah, I think a quite a domain um, uh, specific subject and um, analytics and emerging technologies are actually making things easier for the insurers. Um, Thank you, Dr. Nilesh. It was a fantastic discussion. And thank you for sharing your thoughts. True delight to have you as our guest. Thanks a lot, Surya. It was uh, great to be here. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, thanks. Uh, And lastly, to wrap this up, thank you for listening and see you at our next episode. Take care and stay safe. Goodbye for now. Bye-bye.